Around this time last year, as a bit of a sort of experiment, I decided to see if I could find the cheapest solar-powered battery charging system and inverter that I could for my cabin next door. I needed it for charging some of my drone batteries and the batteries for my battery-powered garden tools like lawnmower and so on. Now, as I say, it was a bit of an experiment. It has worked pretty well. It's been in and working for a year. But over that year, I've noticed the charge state of the gel battery that I'm using has just gradually declined. It's not able to keep up with it. Now, here in the UK, we don't get 100% sun all the time. So we need a very efficient system to make it work in that sort of environment. Now, the two big problems that I've got with my system are the solar panel itself. Now, the original one I got was a pool. I think it was about 10 pounds and it was 40 watts and it's just not really up to the job so I upgraded that to a 100 watt 18 volt solar panel. The other big problem is the charge controller and the one that I used originally is one of these PWM charge controllers these are available everywhere they cost again next to nothing 10 pounds something like that maybe even cheaper. These are not very efficient something like 65 to 75 percent efficient and that's a big problem when you don't get a lot of sun. So I decided to switch over to an MPPT controller and this is a Bateria one. I've actually got two of these. These come in 10 amp or 20 amp. I fitted the 10 amp one to my system next door and the big advantage of these is they are anywhere between 95 to 8, 95 to 98 percent efficient. So that's going to work much better in the arrangement that I've got in my system in the cabin. Anyway, let's have a closer look at this and see how it's all going to work. Hello and welcome to the Whirly Bloke channel. So this is the solar charge controller that they're using. It's a Bateria MPPT charge controller. So I need better efficiency during the winter. I have spec this out and what looks to be pretty good. So in the box you get a charge controller, some letter leads and so on. But if you have a look at the spec on this, and I have already spec this out to make sure that it will work with what I've got. It's suitable for gel AGM and lithium ion phosphate batteries, which is fine. I'm using a gel battery because I think that's actually the better value for money. And in terms of the actual voltages, so my solar panel, it's only a little panel, but it's um, it's 18 volts. So the maximum solar input on here is 30 volts, fine. And maximum charge current is 10 amps. We're fine with that as well. So it all looks good. And there's a whole load of information about what the display on the charge controller does. And there's a little button here, which we'll see when we get it powered up. And that just needs a solar panel connecting to it. And that will go off to the battery and to the inverter. And there's a couple of flying leads you get included and they'll need to be soldered up to some longer cables to go to each end. That'll be fairly straightforward. They also give you a little gender changer connector here as well, which I won't be using, but it's a useful touch. The main reason I chose this is because there's an app that goes with it. So I can actually monitor and set this up remotely and I'm assuming it's using Bluetooth but there's an Android version and an iOS version. I'll be using Android. Before I get everything wired up properly in the shed here, it's a bit tight for space in there. I keep banging my head so I thought I'd do a quick test out here. That's my new 100 watt solar panel, 18 volts and I made a couple of extension leads connected up to the connector that comes with the charge controller and then I've got another one which is going to my gel battery. So let's get this connected up and see what this actually does. Make sure that's the right way around and powered up which is looking pretty good. It says 12.9 volts so it's got some charge. So this is 100% charged. It's already detected in fact it's a gel battery, but I know from playing with this earlier on that if I long press this bunt here, I can cycle through the different battery types and then you just long press. Whoops. 
long press to set it. There we go, fantastic. Now, as always happens when I'm trying to film, the sun goes behind a cloud. But anyway, let's see what happens. But into that. Well, it is actually charging. I know this is not quite fully charged. We can see the voltage is creeping up and it's charging at 0.1 amps, 100 milliamps. Display automatically dims after a short while. So that seems to be doing what we expected to do. Now, big thing of course is, does it work with the app? So I've already installed the Charge Pro app, which is free. This is, make sure to get the glare off there. Let's get that up and running. Now the first thing you do is press this button in the top right hand corner to find the charge controller. It's found a whole load of things, but the Charge Pro is the thing we want. We just connect on that. That's all good. And you see it's connected, which is good. 90% charge. We've got 40.2 volts coming in from the solar panel. Not surprising really, because there's a grabby cloud just come over. And it says the battery is at 13 volts and the current is point, oops, current is 0.16 amps, which sort of, yeah, sort of matches up with what we've got on the display there, which is great. This app does seem to be pretty good. There's a whole load of parameters that you can change. You have to unlock them, you can choose your cell type and all that sort of thing. Got the real time monitoring, which is great. There's a whole lot of stuff down here, and importantly, it's got the historic data there, which you can show either as a uh, line graph or as a bar graph. These are showing you all sorts of things like maximum voltage, highest battery, sorry, highest battery voltage, lowest battery voltage, maximum charge power, and that sort of thing. So, I think this is looking very good. Oh, it tells us the temperature of the charge controller as well. I'm going to get this all wired up in the cabin over there, get the inverter connected up, and I'll get back to you when that's all done. There we go, all wired up. This is a little bit cramped in here, I keep banging my head. The wiring needs a little bit of a tidy. That won't take me too long. And then I've got a hole to fill over here with some sealant to stop the spiders and the creepy crawlies getting in. Now, it's only taking me about an hour to do this. And originally this was the cheapest way to keep my batteries charged up for my battery powered garden tools like my lawnmower and my strimmer and so on so it's not particularly needing a lot of power but it's very convenient to have power in here so that's completely overkill but it came with the original kit and i'm just going to carry on using it and i'll also be using this to keep this lively power pack all charged up i think it's a thousand watts or i actually think it might be 1200 watts watt hours i don't remember anyway i have reviewed this in the past now, what I'm hoping is that because we've jumped the PWM charge controller, which is incredibly inefficient, and swapped over to the MPPT charge controller, which is very efficient, close to 100%, I'm hoping that that will long-term keep the battery in good shape. At the moment, it seems to be doing a pretty good job, and of course, I can always monitor it next door using the app by Bluetooth. Anyway, I shall get on and get this all tidied up. Thanks for watching, and if you found it useful, maybe give me a thumbs up, and if you're new here, why not subscribe for more videos like this. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.